Welcome back to PSC's Tech Byte. Uh, this week, I want to talk with you about how you can create an outgoing webhook for Microsoft Teams uh, using the Yo Teams uh, generator. First of all, we need to know that an outgoing webhook uh, is a kind of uh, bot without being a real bot. So it is something that you can use to send a post message to an outgoing webhook. You can process the post message and you can reply back uh, to that message. Usually, you use it to create an activation based on an add mention action in Teams, and the add mention will trigger, will wake up the outgoing webhook, which will be able to reply back within the same channel where it has been activated. When you create an outgoing webhook, you have to register the outgoing webhook in a team, and then you can use it in channels. So far, you can use it only in public channels and not yet in private channels. You can create it with whatever technology you like, like for example .NET Core, .NET Framework, Node.js and TypeScript, and the Yo Teams generator scaffolds for you a solution based on TypeScript and Node.js. So, let me move to the demo environment, let me show you how to create such kind of solutions. So, let's start using Yo Teams to create an outgoing webhook. As usual, we say Yo Teams at the common prompt. We will provide all of the answers to all of the questions of the Yeoman Generator for Teams. So this is the correct solution name. I will use the current folder. This is the description for my app. Uh, this is my name uh, as the company name. I'm going to use version 1.5 of the Manifest for Teams apps. Uh, I will not provide a partner ID and I will select uh, to create an outgoing webhook uh, uh, kind of solution. Then I can eventually provide the URL of the solution in Azure when it will be hosted, which is not yet the case right now. And I can enable testing, which I will not. I can enable telemetry and I will not. I can provide a name for my outgoing webhook, which can be, for example, your Teams sample web hook. And this scaffolding process will start. It will take uh, just a short amount of time because this time we need less uh, packages and less content than usual or than when we create uh, a bot uh, or a tab or stuff like that. And as soon as the scaffolding will be ready, we can see what the solution generated uh, uh, for us uh, looks like. So let me start uh, Visual Studio Code, code dot. And here we have uh, the generated solution. First of all, we have a readme file with few instructions about what to do in order to register the solution. And in the SRCs folder, as usual, we have in the script folder the uh, Yo Team Sample Webhook Outgoing Webhook, which is the folder auto generated by the scaffolding tool to uh, have my actual implementation of the uh, outgoing webhook. The outgoing webhook is just a type implementing an interface, I outgoing webhook which will have a request handler method override. And in this method, we will simply define the behavior, the basic behavior of the uh, webhook. So whenever we get a request, we get as an input the uh, request and we have a response object uh, as well. So first of all, in the out of the box implementation, we simply get the request body. We create uh, a new response message to reply back uh, to the uh, target user. We process a security token that we store in the environment variables of our solution and we'll show you how to get that token as so that when we get the request as an input request, we can compare the content of the authorization header in the request that we get with the security token that we store in our environment. And of course, if the security is good, so the authorization header is correct, we can process the request. And right here, we simply reply back with an echo of the message we get as the incoming message. And then we reply back to the channel using a json.stringify of the message. If you like, uh, in the reply message, you can specify whatever kind of type you like using the activity types uh, enumeration. And once you're done, you simply need to register the outgoing webhook in Microsoft Teams, which I'm going to do right now. So if you click on manage team for a target team, you go to apps and you create an outgoing webhook. You will provide a name for the webhook, which can be, for example, the name of my webhook right here. So your team sample webhook. 
I will provide the URL, which right now will be a fake one, and then I will replace it with the actual and grok URL and uh, grok endpoint of my uh, outgoing webhook. And this would be the description, my sample outgoing webhook. So, oh, there is a typo right here. So this is the endpoint for my webhook created. And once you have done that, you get back the security token which you will have to copy in a safe place because this will be the only point in time where you will be able to see the security token. So you can close this window, go back to the .env file in your solution and paste it in the security underscore token variable in the uh, environment of your solution. Once you've done that, you run a new terminal window and you say gulp and grok serve like always when we play with your teams. The ngrok endpoint will be registered and you will be able to replace the URL, uh, the fake one, with the actual one we have uh, right here. So let me copy it. Let me go back to my webhook and let me update the URL right here. And that's it. Once you have done that, you can go into a target channel. Every now and then it takes a while to have the outgoing webhook fully registered, but let me try it right now. So I can simply say, hey, at mention of my webhook, so your team's sample webhook. How are you? And here we are, we get the echo of the message that we just sent to the external outgoing webhook. Simple as that. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you so much.